All right, so this video is going to be on animated textures. Uh, you can do animated textures for items such as this gold. I put a little glint on there. And uh, you can also do it for blocks like this cactus. I made the little spikes uh, move on the edge of the block. Uh, so yeah, we're going to show you how to do that in this video. I'm going to use the iron ingot as an example. Uh, we're going to put a glint on the iron ingot. And so yeah, stay tuned for that. And in my next video, I'm going to do the water and lava textures. So uh, stay tuned for that video. That'll be in a separate video. Okay, so there's two things we're going to need to do in order to create an animated texture. The first one is we need to create our image file, which will have multiple frames of animation. The second one is we need to create a file which will tell the game to display these pictures in the game. So let's start off with the image. So head into your resource pack folder. If you don't know how to get here, check out episode one. Head into assets, into Minecraft, textures, and we're gonna head into items because we're gonna work with the iron ingot first. But remember, you can only do this for items and blocks. Now we need to find the item we want to animate, which in our case is the iron ingot. And we're gonna open it with a image editing software. In my case, it's Pixelmator. And I'll zoom in here. And there's two things right away we want to note from this image. The first one is the dimensions of the image, which as you can see is 16 by 16. This is the resolution which your texture will be. Now, if you want are making a more high definition resource pack, it might be 32 by 32 or um, 64 by 64 and so on. The next thing we want to note is the number of pixels from our texture to the top of the canvas here. So there's two at the top and two at the bottom. For yours, it may vary. So we're going to remember that. Next thing we want to do is create a strip where we can put all of our animations. So let's create a new document. We're going to keep the width at 16 pixels and the height we're going to do an increment of 16, such as 16 times 2 for 2 frames, 16 times 3 for 3, 16 times 10 for 10 frames. I think we're going to do a 4 pixel animation, so we'll do 16 times 4, which is 64. And it opens up a new canvas here. And as you can see off the bat, there's a white background, which we do not want. We need it to be transparent. Otherwise, yeah, we need it to be transparent. So I'm just going to get rid of this background and for your program it may vary in the method of doing that but make sure it is transparent next thing is we're going to copy over our iron ingot texture there it is and we're going to set it up at the top here now we want to make sure it's the same distance from the top as the other one which is two pixels and now we need to create a bunch more of these down the strip, four to be exact. And you'd think we go two again, one, two, but now we need to go two because of the top of the image as well. One, two, so four in between for the iron ingot. And we need to get them all the way down. There we go, we have a distance of four pixels in between each of these, as you can see there. And so now we need to just edit our various frames. So I'm gonna keep the top one the same and I'm gonna create a little glint going across the iron ore here. So we're gonna grab our little tool and grab our brush and we're just gonna paint a little line going across. So what it's going to do is it's going to start here at the top and go down these various images in order. And there's also a way if you want to edit that order which I will show you later on. So now that our image is done we're going to save it. So or we're going to export it rather. So come up to, to export wherever it is. We're going to go PNG file and now we want to name it as the exact same name that our last file was. And in this case, it's iron underscore ingot. 
and we'll hit export. There it is. Okay, so now that we got our image here, we need to create the text file, which will edit this image and tell the game to display all these different images. So we're gonna open up a text editing program, such as text edit for Mac or notepad for Windows. And we wanna make sure this is in plain text format. So we're gonna head over to format and click make plain text. And if you're on a Mac, there's one other thing you wanna do because it doesn't set the default encoding to what we want. So we're gonna head over to text edit. We're gonna click preferences. We're gonna click open and save. We're gonna go down here and you'll see where it says encoding. We want to change this from Unicode to Western Windows Latin 1. There we go. Now we're good to write in all of our properties here. Now, if you check in the description, I will have these various pieces of code so you can just paste it into your document and hopefully move a lot quicker. But for this, I'll show you how to do it. So we're going to start off with a squiggly bracket and a quotation and type in animation. This will tell the game that we want to animate this texture. And then we're going to put a colon. And now we're going to put two squiggly brackets there. And a final squiggly bracket. So as you can see, we have animation and we have two brackets inside. Inside these two brackets, we can put our parameters of how we want to set the animation. But for now, this is base the base of what you need in order to animate a texture. So let's see if it works. So we need to save this document now. So we're going to head over here and click save. Now there's a couple important things we want to do here. First is the name. We need to save this as iron whoop, ingot, which is the name of whatever texture you're editing dot PNG because this file here is a dot PNG file, even though uh, our Mac is hiding it. So iron ingot dot PNG dot MC meta. So it needs to be the exact name of the file dot MC meta. So if you were doing a boat, it would be boat dot PNG dot MC meta. Now we need to uncheck this box because we don't want it to be a text document. And we need to change the encoding once again to Windows Latin one. And we'll click save. There we go. There's our document. So now we just need to implement these in the resource pack and then we'll test it out in game. So we'll head back into our resource pack, Minecraft, textures, items, and we will take both of these, drag them in and we'll replace the old iron. And there they are. Now let's head in game and see if it worked. So we'll come here and we'll enable our pack. And you'll see it worked, our texture is animating. Now you'll notice right away, it doesn't look as nice as the gold. And that's because with the gold, I've actually set some parameters in order to customize the animation so it doesn't just like a, look like a flashing ingot. So next I'll show you how to customize those parameters. Okay, so let's edit the properties of the iron ingot animation so we can get it more in line with the gold here. So I've got my resource pack full, pulled up right over here. So we're going to head inside and we're going to head back into Minecraft, back into items, and we're going to find our files we installed. The image is good, but we want to edit these properties here. So I'll open up this file. And now I want to show you there's a few things that you can put inside of these middle brackets here, which will edit the parameters of the animation. You can change some of the timing, you can change the frame speed per second, and other things like that. So maybe I'll pull a little image up um, next on the screen somewhere here, and it will show you the different properties you can adjust and how to adjust them, maybe just in a quick little image. Um, so let's get into it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to slow down the animation so it doesn't go so fast. So inside these brackets, we're gonna to wanna to do some quotations and we're gonna type frame time and some ending quotations and a colon. 
Now this will set the frame time of the animation. So in like in per seconds. So currently it's running at 20 frames per second. So this iron ingot down here is putting 20 of the frames that we created per second. So let's adjust that. So let's say we want it to be something like, uh, I don't know. We'll just put the value at 20 and see what that does. So now the value is at 20 and we're going to save our document and we're going to come in here and reload the pack. And immediately you can see that the textures are now going way slower. The animation is going a lot slower than it was before. We can clearly individually see each one of those frames. So it still doesn't quite look like the gold, but this is a way you can edit the frame time and the frames per second of your animation. So in this particular instance, this isn't what we want to do, but that's an option. So now let's head back in and we'll erase this piece of code because we don't need it anymore, but that's one of the parameters there. So the next parameter we can edit is the order of the frames, the order they appear. So let's reload this one more time and we're back to it shimmering that way really quickly. So let's edit it. So maybe it looks like the shimmer is going in the other direction. So in order to do that, we'll head back in here and the other parameter we want to type in is called frames. Once again, these will all be down in the description for you to check out. So we're going to type in frames in quotations and then a colon. And next we want to type the order in which we want the frames to appear. So let's take a look at our image over here again. Let's see if I can pull it up. So what Minecraft does is this first image is image zero, is frame zero. The next one is one, the next one's two, and the next one's three. So it's zero, one, two, three. So with that in mind, we can head back into our text file here. And we want to type the order in which we want the frames to appear. So if we want it to go in reverse, we want zero to still be first because that's where there's no shimmer. And we're going to put a comma after. The comma tells the game that there's something more coming. So zero and then a comma. And now we're going to put three because we want the last frame and then comma and then two and then comma and then one with no comma because there's nothing else coming so now we have zero three two one so let's see and it's just going to continually loop so let's see what happens oh and one important thing actually that i just realized i forgot is these frames have to be in square brackets so let's put them in the square brackets just like that and you can check the description again for all the formatting and we'll save it just like that. And hopefully this will work. So let's head back into our game here. We'll reload it. And immediately you can kind of tell it's going in the other direction. It's coming from the back to the forward of the shimmer. So that's cool and all, but that also is not what we want to do. We want to be able to hold it, hold it on the plain frame, just like this one and then have it shimmer just ever so slightly really quickly. So to do that, there's another thing you're gonna have to do. So let's head back into our folder, I mean into our document. Okay, so here's our settings again. Now I'm gonna change this so it's, oops, so it's going in proper order. So we're gonna go one, two, and then three. But now we want it to hold still on frame zero when there's no shimmer for a certain amount of time. So what we do here is we get rid of the zero and we're gonna put some curly brackets, oops, curly brackets. And we're gonna type something called index and then a colon. And this is what frame we want and we want frame zero. And then we're gonna put a comma. And then what comes next is how long we wanna hold the frame for. So the time we wanna hold it. So we put brackets again, we type in the word time, close brackets, a colon, and now how long in frames we want to hold the first frame so let's hold it for 20 frames and then there and now we put our close bracket just like that and the comma so as you can see instead of zero i've put in this bit of text this will tell the game on frame zero hold it for 20 frames 
and then it will follow with frame one, two, and three. We'll save that and let's head back into the game here and reload it and see what happens. And you can see it now holds it on the frame. And it's not quite the same speed as the gold. So if we wanted to get it to similar speed, we'd have to just type in a different time value. So let's see if I can get the same speed. Head back in and we'll change the time to maybe 40. And let's reload it again. And there we go. As you can see, it's the same speed now as the gold ingot. And we get a little shimmer across. So that's how you can edit. And those are all the different parameters that are in the document. So I'm going to end the video off here. If you want to see a video on how to do the water textures and the lava textures for fluids, I'm going to make that video. So check that one out. It's pretty much the same, but there's a few different things. So that one will be a short one. Uh, but that's it. If you want to learn more about a resource pack, make sure you check out my playlist and it should show you close to everything you need to know about making a resource pack. See ya.